Hi everyone, welcome. If this is your first time visiting, my name is Melanie Thompson. A couple of days ago, I took a poll on my community tab and I asked you guys what you would like to see in my next video. I gave a choice of either more primitive country farmhouse decorating, thrifting with me for treasures, or a primitive DIY. And the majority of you chose that you wanted to see more primitive country farmhouse decorating. Actually, it was 59% of you. So that was pretty awesome. So today's video is definitely going to be decorating and I'm going to share how I decorated my mantle and hearth. Then at the end of that video, if you'd like to see a little primitive DIY, I'm going to show you how I made a little DIY that I'm actually incorporating on my mantle. And then for those of you that really wanna see me thrifting and picking and hunting for all kinds of lovely antiques and vintage items and primitive items, I have something in the works and it's going to be probably within the next week or two. So be on the lookout for that video. And it's probably going to be a long video because it's, I don't wanna give any more of it away, but it's, it's gonna be awesome. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to get ready for that one. So, but that's what today's video is going to be. So I'm just gonna, grab my phone off of my tripod and I'm gonna head into my living room and show you guys what I created. So for the top of my mantle, I really added a lot of things that are really special to me and pieces that I absolutely love. We'll go over here and start on this corner. So this is an old sewing machine box or I'm sorry, an old sewing machine drawer. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know that people decorated with sewing machine drawers until I was talking to my friend, Donna Andres, and she had mentioned to me that she was decorating with her vintage sewing machine, excuse me, sewing machine drawers. So it inspired me to go and get some. And I loved the old blue paint that was on this sewing machine drawer. I just thought it was so beautiful. And inside, I just tucked a little bit of greenery and some old brooms. Now my friend, Jean E, has amazing brooms like these. And a few of them she just found recently. So the one that has the eagle on it, I found that at one of my favorite country malls, the Crossroads Country Mall. I absolutely love that place and I share it in many of my videos. And actually I found the one in behind there too. Um, and the smaller one I just found recently at a new variety shop that I plan to share with you guys very soon. And going on to the right, I have in the center this gorgeous checkerboard. And on the back, it has the Chinese checkerboard. This was handmade over a hundred years ago by my uncle. And I love this piece. I can't tell you how much I love this. My mom gave it to me a few years ago and at first, I didn't decorate with it because I wasn't really decorating in a style that it looked good. But last year, I started kind of phasing out of the style that I was decorating in. And now I'm decorating in primitive, country, rustic, farmhouse, um, also some early American. So if you've been missing my videos, on my new style of decorating. I'll be sure to link my videos below in my description box. And I also recently shared this precious picture. I love this. I found this at the Goodwill and I only paid a few dollars for it. And let me just see if I can get a little bit closer here. 
just to let you really see that. But isn't that so precious? I just love it. And then here I have a old iron that my mom gave me and it was her mom's. And on, let me see if I can get closer here and show you. But I also have it sitting on a trivet, an iron trivet, and that I purchased at Goodwill. And I just have to readjust here because my arm is getting tired how I'm holding my phone. Um, and beside that, I just have a lantern and I'm gonna get closer to show you this neat little piece. This is my vintage smudge pot. And when I bought it last year at Goodwill for just a few dollars, I had no idea what it was. So I asked my viewers in my video and they told me that it was a smudge pot and it was used for starting fires a long time ago. And when I lifted the lid and I smelled inside it, you can still smell a very faint odor of kerosene. I assume it was probably kerosene, but I think this is a perfect piece to add to this primitive display. Here's a look at the front of my sewing machine drawer. When I started to play around with how I wanted to decorate my mantle, I knew I wanted to have a garland, but I also knew I had none on hand that were going to look nice or what I was wanting. So I decided to make my own and this was such an easy DIY and I love the end result. I just used some fabrics that I had laying around the house. I love the checkered gingham. I just think it adds a nice pop of color and I also wanted it to match how I had it decorated on my mantle and my hearth. So that was another reason why I chose these fabrics. But you don't have to go out and buy brand new fabrics. You can just use pieces of what you already have or even just rags because this is just a very simple rag garland. And then over here, I just love my fireplace because it has the stone and I just think it's so beautiful. But for this, I just um, added some, these are just faux, they're not real. These are just some faux spices uh, that I just hung here. It would be nice if I had some real ones. I would love that and it would look so great. But for now, I don't, so this will just have to do. And that's the spoon that I just shared in one of my last videos, but I think that looks so charming. Here's a closer look of that spoon. I have no idea if it's old, but it looked old and I thought, hey, it doesn't matter. It's gonna look great in my decorating. And here's just a closer look of these spices. And it just adds a nice pop of color and it also just really works nice for you know spring is coming so I don't want to overdo it with my primitive decorating so this is just a nice way to add in a little bit of greenery. Our fireplace is a wood burning fireplace and as you can see we use it a lot and we can't fit enough wood in our holder so my husband always brings up some extra. So yeah, we do let it sit there. You know, this is a real functioning house, you guys. So it's not just a show house. We live here and sometimes you just have to do what works best for you. And having some extra wood right here on the floor of our hearth, that's what we need to do. Aren't these buckets gorgeous? I bought them Friday at the Crossroads Country Mall. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love these. And I lucked out because the owner of the booth was having 50% off. 
and I didn't get 50% off on the bottom one, but I did still get a little bit of a discount. And I apologize because my receipt wasn't itemized. I thought it was. So I can't even remember exactly what I paid for these buckets, but it wasn't much at all. And this one was 50% off. Can you believe that? 50% off of this bucket. I love this. I think they are so cute. And I have no idea if these were originally painted like this. I doubt it. I think these were probably painted later, but look at the job that someone did on this. They are so talented. They did a lovely job. And I think it looks so cute. I love it. I'm leaving this bucket as is. I'm not touching either one of these buckets because I love them. And it does have a little bit of some kind of a band here, but you can't make out anything. I just, you know, it just can't see anything on it, but they're definitely old. And this ironing board, I never got to share it with you guys. You probably, if you've been following my channel, you've probably heard me mention about my sister-in-law who is like the yard sale queen. She finds me so many awesome things. And what she does is when she's at yard sales, because she lives in Pennsylvania, so I can't go with her. But when she's there, she'll send me pictures of things that she sees that I might be interested in. And she's like, hey, do you want me to pick this up for you? And she has found me so many things. Well, now my niece is starting to do the same thing. And my niece... I tell you what, she knows exactly what I like because she's been finding me some awesome things. And she found this for me late last summer or early fall, and I think it is just perfect. I love this ironing board. And I thought at first about placing it out in my mudroom because my mudroom is also my laundry room, but I thought, nah, it's gonna look so sweet right here. And I shared this little sleeper or this little onesie um, in a couple videos ago that I shared. And at first I thought it was actually a onesie until one of my viewers said, you know what? I think that's actually some old men's socks with a doily. And she is absolutely right. That is the cutest thing. So if you're really crafty, something like this would be super easy and fun to recreate. And you could just style it up to fit your own personal taste. And then they just have country laundry. And the other reason that I thought this would look really great here is because a lot of times I will, well, okay, for one, I always like to hang certain pieces of clothing. I don't throw all of our stuff in the dryer because it shrinks. So I have a drying rack and I'll set the drying rack right in front of the fireplace because it throws some wonderful heat. So I thought this is going to look perfect. It looks like I would be drying a little baby's clothes. So that's why I decided to hang that there. And this, I have no idea if it's actually old. I've had it for a couple of years, but I thought, you know what? That's gonna look really nice in with this little display. I don't know, what do you guys think? I'd love to hear, let me know in my comments below what you think of my mantle and heart. This is a really easy DIY, and this would also be great to do with your kids or grandkids. Something to keep them occupied while you're trying to maybe get some work done or just crafting of your own. But what I started with was the number 72 four ply jute. You could use any size really, but I like this just because it's not too thin and it's not too thick. And then all I did was cut it to my length and you can cut it to whatever length you need. And the one that I used on my mantle, I cut to seven feet, but I'm not even going to cut this because I'm just demonstrating for you what I did. So you can cut that to the length that you want. And then I took my fabrics that I was using and I tore it into strips. I didn't cut it. 
I tore it because I wanted it to have this frayed edge. So I just tore it and then after I tore the strips, I then cut it into six inch pieces. So as you can see, that's my six inches right there. And this is so easy peasy, you guys. All you do then is just tie these into knots. And you can either tie it once or twice. I tied mine twice, but once is perfectly fine. The only reason that I did tie mine twice was because I was just afraid that they would loosen up and fall off. <laughs> so, and, but you can also make this as full or as thin as you want. If you don't want your little pieces of fabric touching, you can, uh, you know, leave a little space in between them. But I liked mine to be nice and full. So I just kept, you know, pushing mine down. And if you, you know, decide you want to add a different color or something in, you can always just, you know, adjust it later. But that's what you do. And then after I was done, I just kind of, you know, shuffled mine around just to, you know, I wanted my fabrics, you know, facing in all the directions. And that's it, you guys. It is so simple. Even little kids can do this one. Well, that wraps up today's video. I really hope I was able to give you some ideas that you can try in your decorating. And I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you all again next week. Take care.